Hello YouTube, and today I am going to be talking about um, something called stellar evolution. It's how stars evolve. Like, look at this picture. So first, there's a molecular cloud which turns into an open cluster, which is a bit more dense. And then if it's too small, like less than 0.08 masses of the sun or 80 masses of Jupiter, it's a brown dwarf. It can only fuse deuterium and it can't fuse hydrogen. And then when 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 it starts and then, if it's smaller than 8 masses of the sun, and this is as far as most stars go, it's called a low mass star. And the sun is wrong, though. And it'll turn into a red giant, and it's got a white dwarf near it, it goes like this. The, the white dwarf sucks up more and more and more and more and more stuff, and then eventually, and, and then, when the white dwarf gets about 1.44 um, masses of the sun, it releases a supernova that is called Type 1A supernova. Because it's always 1.44 1, 1, 1. masses of the sun, and it's basically the same composition. It's, the, the supernova is about to always the same size, which has made it very, very important in understanding our universe. Uh, I, I've read a book called The Five, the Four Percent Universe, and talked about how Saul per Perlmutter's and, and another person called Smixed, and their, their two teams were, were looking for these Type 1A supernova to see how fast the universe were, was expanding at different times. And that was very important since they, they were basically the same brightness like anywhere. So it's very important. See? But if it doesn't get as much and it just doesn't have enough mass, it just has this thing just has a nova. And then the white and then it also becomes a white dwarf, so that's why there are so many with binary white dwarfs, like side, like little red dwarfs, or even little white dwarfs. They don't get enough, and they get binary white dwarfs. And they and all white dwarfs uh, eventually fade into black dwarfs. They don't even have any fusion. They're they're just giving out radiation, but uh, they. They, they can last like trillions of years and then become black dwarf. But I, in my opinion, the most cool thing is if they get larger than eight masses of the sun. They, they make a, quite a massive star. And they are huge. And they may, and they have much quicker main sequence than these because they actually do it way faster because they have so much pressure that well the speed just speeds up and it goes exponentially it, like a red dwarf but just barely above this limit it it actually barely act it actually can last for trillions of years the sun is going to last for 10 billion and a massive star like eight masses of the sun is going to last a few hundred million. Now, well, the details aren't aren't very very useful. It's just that uh, my point is that well, it's, it grows exponentially. Now, also, um, they actually expand and and get smaller. Because if it so if it's done its hydrogen fusion, it expands into a supergiant. And if it's and it's 
and if it's a mass like the sun, or it's very large, like larger than the, than the, than the sun, it can start helium fusion. It gets smaller, and then it bursts out, and then into another giant. But stars like our sun only stop at helium, but these things are even more awesome. They they fuse the heat, the carbon and oxygen generated to to like magnesium, and then keep going until they reach iron. Iron is like poison for stars because if you fuse them, it actually takes energy. So so they so they um when 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 their iron core gets. Sorry, that was my dad over there accidentally interrupting. And and if you got uh, um, the little um, iron core, that's it's more than about 1.44 masses of the sun, then something, I, I guess, I'm guessing is very spectacular happening. The iron core suddenly collapses, and the edge of it gets very, very fast. And the rest of the stars just rush in, and sort of compress it so hard that it bounces out in a very, very violent supernova called Type Two supernova. They aren't as stable as Type One A because you can have eight masses or. Ten masses or any type of mass, and it will do this because the accumulation is just so fast. Silicon diffusion usually finishes in about a day, and that's not much in stellar terms, where things are usually measured in terms of millions of years or billions or trillions or whatever. Well, it will have a gigantic supernova remnant. And if it's larger than about forty ma, if it's smaller than about forty masses of the sun, the 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 quantum uh repulsion of electrons in like atoms that holds a white dwarf together, they actually fail, and and the all and the protons and the electrons fuse together to become a neutron. So this, that's why, if it's small, it's called a neutron star, and it gets compressed, and then neutron degeneracy pressures holding it up instead of electron degeneracy pressure. Uh, my electricity is running out. Just, uh, I'm just gonna pause this. Um, wait, wait, wait. Oh no! Oh no! Okay, ha, I'm back. Well, as I was saying, okay, as I was saying, electron degeneracy, which is the repulsion of electrons, don't work, and it relies on the repulsion of neutrons. Well, if you uh, study uh, quantum mechanics, you might have heard this before, but there's a quant, uh, but... The details are very complicated, so I ain't going to be getting uh, close to it. So it's just going it's just going to collapse into a lot. in quantum mechanics it's predicting that that um uh wait, the charger fell again. In quantum mechanics, it predicts that um, if you have a very, very, a very close atom, you have the atoms very, very close together. The the electrons will have will not have to want to be very close together. So um, that's how you you feel touching because. There's the um, electron degeneracy pressure. It's basically every single pressure that we have, that we think of in the normal days. But neutron stars, well, 
They are the other ones. Well, if it's more than about 40 ma 30 to 40 masses of the sun, even that can't hold it together. And it collapsed to a point infinitely small. I don't know what happened. Well, it collapsed to a point like as small as it can be. Uh, a concept called Planck. Planck. It's as small as it's possible to measure. Okay, I'm just going to go back. Um, it's small as possible. It's just like small. Okay, well, well, uh, we're just going to be talking about it. So, if it's, it's so small, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just like, so small. It's just as small as possible, playing Clank. And I might want to give you a concept of that. So, wait, playing Clank, the, the playing Clank, is the scale at which classical ideas about gravity and space-time cease to be valid, and the quantum effects dominate. And this is, I am not going to read this for you because I don't even know how to read it, the smallest measurement of length with any meaning, and roughly equal to 1.6 times 10 times 10, to the minus 35th meter, or about 10 to the minus 30th times the size of a proton, which is about um um 1.6 times um 0 0.340 the root and one, and that's an incredibly small thing, like so small and yeah, i'm not just go not going to wait for this we're just gonna be looking at this okay can i change this nope it seems that this darn thing can't even do anything well anyways um it black holes when when they first start to become a black hole they have a very, 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 very violent burst of rays called a gamma ray, gamma ray burst, or GRBs for short. So, um, uh, back when, back at the Cold War, the USA and the USSR both, both had, like, nuclear we weapons with nuclear and they and they would use gam gamma ray satellites to try and detect the gamma rays from those nukes exploding but they detected the different types and that turned out to be um gamma ray burst burst later and this is quite very 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 powerful if it's aimed at us it, it you can feel the gamma. Uh, you can cause like the same as a solar flare and directly at us from like billions of light years away. It's so powerful. Quite powerful. Like, you can be across the galaxy. Pew, we're dead. It's just. Well, it might be a, a, a solution to the like, Fermi paradox. It, it could be what's killing all the aliens. And I hope we are safe. Safe. Well, I'm I haven't talked enough about neutron stars and that will be up for another video. But for now, um thanks for supporting me and subscribe if you ha still haven't. And check out some of my other videos. I've got nine now. As if that's enough. I'll make it, I'll be making more videos because it's the weekend now. Uh, and I have more time. Well, bye. And we're just gonna try to move this. No. 
Whoopsies. Oh yeah, my VPNs do.